top five centre midfielders Ooh. in the Premier League. Um, I think when we first uh, came up with this, yeah, immediately uh, centre midfielders. Rodri and Rice, we both agreed that they would be in the top five. We're going to make this really clear. We're not talking about number 10s. So sixes we're, and eights. Sixes and eights. Yeah. We're just going to clarify that right now before everyone says, Madison's got to be in there. Uh, yeah. yeah, no we De Bruyne, like Madison. No De Bruyne, no Erdegaard, no yeah. Madison. Fernando. No, and Kai would have won. So yeah, obviously have us, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, get the 10s out but, of here. But quickly, before we, we do go to like the other three that make it into the top five, we, we put these two at number one and two, but what order do you have them in? Right, Rice and Rodri. So, so j- just to be really Really clear. We're talking about this season. Yeah, we're talking yeah, about yeah. this season right now. Yeah, yeah, it's rice. It's rice. This season, rice. It's rice. But I'm Rodri. not convinced. I'm not Great. convinced that if you stuck Rodri into Arsenal's team, he couldn't perform to the same level that Rice is. In fact, he's probably performing to the same level Rice is right now. I think that. I'm not accusing anyone around the table of it. I'm accusing myself of it. Always going to have a bit of English bias. Like, definitely going to have a bit of English bias. Even though you could have chose Ireland, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, um, also, the fact, that, the, the fact that, like, you know, Rodri's been doing it at that level, so we already knew that. Whereas Rice, look, I'm not saying I doubted him at all, but when does a £100 million signing ever live up to the price? Okay. I, 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 don't mind, I, don't, I don't mind holding my hand up and say I doubted him a little bit. I didn't think he was going to be bad. I didn't know if he'd be able to come into our team. Bear in mind, he he was playing like suffer ball mm. at West Ham. It was full Brexit ball. He, he, he was their team. And when he when he came into Arsenal, I know you're loving this, Craig. Uh, when he came into Arsenal, I was, like, I was like, it might take him a few weeks to learn the system. It might, Mate, within two weeks, he was our best player. And he has been all season. And the, and the, the thing I'll say about the Rodri comparison... Rice does everything. Yeah. Rice has done six. He's gone left eight recently. He's scoring goals. He's taking set pieces. He's got assists. This guy, like, I, I'm, I've honestly, like, since the start of the season, I'm like, I don't know whether you're going to develop into an up and down goal scoring box to box midfielder or just be the best six in the world. Because you could actually do either if that's, you wanted that's to. That's what we're seeing. That's the, what we're the seeing. The development. Ability, um, I have no idea he had this technical ability. I'm glad you mentioned best six in the world because right now it's, I think everyone outside of England, everyone within England would say that that's Rodri. Like, would you, if you're looking at sort of like naming the best team in the world right now in the sixth position, I don't think anyone other than the Arsenal fans would actually say that that's Declan Rice. I, everyone so would be going, it's I'm, Rodri. I'm... I think the words are easy. He could be the best six in the world. I, I would agree it, with you that right agree, now, could it's be. super, super, super tight between the two. And I think you could make an argument either way. I, I think maybe you slightly lean towards Rodri. We're talking about the best midfielder in the league. Rodri. And I think be, because of the fact that Declan Rice has scored goals, because he adds things, because he's got creativity, because he takes set pieces. I think as okay. a midfielder, right, wait, he's a more uh, rounded let, footballer. Let me ask Craig. Let me ask Craig. What he's saying there is yeah. that he's more of an all-rounder and that's why he's better. He can do more. What would your counterpoint be? That's just not true. Rodri can do more. Has he scored more goals? Not more goals, but more important goals as well. Rodri has scored important goals. He scores worldies. This season? I can't remember. He scored a few goals this season. I don't know how important they were this season. He definitely it's scored one important goal. In, it's interesting, oh, yeah, interesting because that. they're exactly the same. Little. Goals and assists. Okay. So, oh, so, so, oh, so oh, that's in the Premier League. Oh, oh, in the Premier League. Wait, 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 just wait, saying. Wait, so, so, he said that games one at a time. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Because wait, he asked me, he asked me, he asked me. Wait, let me just answer this, right? He can do everything Rice does except one, he's been doing at a high level for a longer time. He's actually won big trophies doing it. And there's that amazing stat that Man City, he is undefeated in the Man City team for the last 59 games, which is the longest streak for a player in the Premier League so far. It says it right here. The 27 year olds unbeaten his last 59 appearances in all competitions for them. So when he plays, they don't lose. Arsenal have lost with Declan Rice playing multiple times this season in the Premier League. So that alone, to me, floors the Declan yeah, Rice argument. Eight mile, this, doesn't it? Well, yeah, it is. The, the, the proof is in the pudding. If Rodri plays, if Rodri plays, they don't lose. <laughs> how many times have you lost this season? Four, four times. Four times. And Declan Rice played all those games. So that ends that for me. That's how integral Rodri is Mate, beans, to this Man City beans, team. Beans. And you can't get the ball off him. When he has the ball, he reminds me, and I know I'm using a Spurs reference because I'm a Spurs player, but he reminds me he's got that like Moussa Dembele where you cannot get the ball off Rodri he he rarely loses the ball he's so calm under pressure he scores goals he takes people on he drives the ball up. he can do both boxes but Rodri come on man let's be clear Rodri is the best midfielder be, in the Premier League being a very close second to Rodri is not a bad thing Declan Rice that, played that out his skin good. this season yeah. Rodri's not even playing out his skin and they've got the same stats that alone says it all oh, no, to me Rice has got more assists 
Rice has got more assists than Rodri. Not in the Premier League, he hasn't. All, okay, all competitions he's got more. Oh, okay. like, Man City undefeated in 59 appearances when Rodri plays in all competitions. I, I think that's, we that's... agree it's very close. So let's go to a vote, right? <laughs> I'm going to start with Joey. Who are you voting for out of the two of them? Some new be... information has cropped up on the table now, Joey. I'm just going to, before I do it, say that I've not got a real weighted argument to back it, but I'm going to say Rice. English bias. Rice? Yeah, me is. Craig? Rodri. 100% Rodri. Rodri, I agree. If I could take one player right now in my team, I'm taking Rodri. Like, that's do, just do you know what it is, though? I think by next season, um, my feeling will have changed. I feel like Rice is only going to get better. I, I, I'm obviously being partisan as an Arsenal fan. Rodri is one of the best midfielders I've seen in the Premier League. And, mm. and I think in terms of them, it's so, 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 so tight. And, and like... Week by week, there'll be times when I go, fucking hell, Rodri's had a game and a half this year. Like, and then there'll be weeks where, like, it's, it's so super tight. And, and I'm not, I'm not going to cry about the fact that Rodri's won this little vote, like, because he's, he's unbelievable. Did, did Rodri win them the Champions League last year? Am I, am I mistaken? Did he score the goal I, I in the final? The thing with that Rodri, won it for them? Yeah, the thing with Rodri that's uh, done it for me watching his career is when he doesn't play, the drop off in that team is staggering. Like, it's, yeah. Um, so, yeah, look. As, as a title competitor with City this season, I'm praying for City to lose games as often as I'm praying for Rodri to get a red card. Like on, honest, honestly, a Rodri red card means it's as good as like honestly. <laughs> yeah. Yesterday in that game between City and Liverpool, if you'd have said to me either a Liverpool winner so the City drop points or a Rodri red card, I'd have taken a Rodri red card so he misses the Etihad game. He's that integral. Yeah, he is that integral. I, I think yeah, completely. Um, right, number three. Who, who, who are we saying last? Like? This is this is easy. This is a really easy well, one. It's, Doug, it's one. Douglas Luiz. He's been the best by an absolute mile in Villa. Villa, Villa, right? They're, they're in the Champions League places. He's and in my Douglas list. Louise has been one of their best players. He's in my list. He, he ain't third, but by, he's in my list. By the way, by the way, Douglas Louise, nine goals, seven assists mm. in the league so mm. far. Penalties. A lot of penalties. A lot, lot of penalties, but seven assists. That's a lot. That's more than Roger and Rice. Yeah. Yeah, I I think that when you Job go for me. when you go below these two, when you go below Rodri and Rice, it's very hard to then put them in an order in terms of like the three I've got and I've picked from three that could be nine. Yeah, it's very hard to put them in that order. But the argument you've made there for Douglas Louise, I do think is a good one. The only f- problem with this is we're predicting it with ten games to go. I really think Spurs are going to pit Villa to that fourth spot. And then I think you start to look at it a little bit, little bit differently. Um, Just for context for you, mate, more key passes uh, per game than Rodri or Rice and also more big chances created total mm. in the entire season than either of those players. Do, well, and and more than Bruno Guimaraes. Yeah. For me, it's actually, it's actually really simple. You go, those two... Douglas Weiss third. He's going to go to Arsenal. He'll be a great player there. Congratulations, you won it. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, I, I'm, what I, midfield no. that would be, by the way? What well, midfield? If you put Douglas Weiss into your midfield, yeah, yeah, what, yeah, yeah. what a midfield! No, no, I'm excited. I, I've, I've got a third. I think Pip's yours, and I, I did check the eligibility of this guy before we discussed this, and he's not on the tens list. Bernardo Silva, good player, all round midfielder. I, I think he makes City tick. I, th- I think. I think in terms of talent, he's one of the most talented players in the league. Yeah, I, I, I think Pep would pick him as one as one of the best players he's, he's worked with at City. Mm. I, I, I don't. I, does he do a more important job than Douglas Louise in, in their of, team? Yeah, that's, what, their, I'm yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. In their team, does it hurt Man City to take Bernardo Silva out of the side as much as it hurts Aston Villa to take Douglas Luiz out of the side? It's, it's hard though because it's like <laughs> there are players who are incredibly important for Luton who wouldn't, you know, you, you can compare with Bernardo Silva. Who, Glad you mentioned that, he mate, would because Ross Barkley he, he he would, would be right up there for yeah. me. Right up there. Above <laughs> Bernardo Silva. I mean, impact for the individual teams, if you look at it, Ross yeah. Barkley's been integral. Uh, yeah, but we're not doing impact for individual teams. We're saying who's the best midfielder. Okay, I don't think Bernardo Silva keeps Luton in the league this year, and I think Ross Barkley might. <laughs> No. Wait, what? You got, what? What did you say? You. I, I don't think he's done me there, mate. I think Bernardo Silva would have a fucking statue outside you. <laughs> but uh, what, you gone? Have you gone? No, I'm saying Ross Barkley would be one of my five. Oh, I thought you said at number three, no? Third. no, 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 no. Third? I had Bruno G, but I have been swayed a little bit by the Douglas Louise numbers okay. that you've read out. So, if I, so personally, I would then have Douglas Louise, Bruno G. I've gone, I've gone... At number three, Douglas is in mind, but he's not at number three. I've gone McAllister. I've gone Alex McAllister. And look, 
The stats ain't been... He scored a couple pens in recent games. Well, have you got the stats the, there, Alex the, McAllister? The, the stats are good. The stats are good, but... Let's <laughs> not use the stats. But, yeah, but, but, he's, but, but listen, he's been playing a number six, hasn't he? He's taken over Fabinho's old role. Sometimes, you know, he, 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 he moves up the field as well, but... The job he's done in this Liverpool team this season, I did not expect him to come in and be dominating the midfield mm. in the way he has. I think there's a lot of players in that Liverpool team that are integral that have been good this season. Obviously, the revival of Van Dijk. But when I'm watching McAllister week in, week out, he's so important to this team. He has adopted everything that Klopp needs in a central midfielder in such a short space of time. He's 25 years old. Obviously, we know he's a World Cup winner. But it looks to me like he's really... Ta- Even that game yesterday, we were speaking about all those other players that, you know, the young players that stepped in and did a job. But McAllister was amazing yesterday against Man City. Yeah, he was. He's like, the, he really was dominating the midfield and was an engine. He's I, the I first one from brutal. that Brighton team to, like, push right on, hasn't he? Like, you look at the, yeah. the guys from the Brighton team that have gone. <laughs> Kukurad didn't really massively, massively... Caicedo. <laughs> Caicedo, I think, is very good, but I'm not going to try and slip him into the ben list. White, I think. Ben White... Yeah, no, Ben White's, ben ben White's, White's a fair one. Man- yeah. McAllister has literally gone into this Liverpool team, slotted right in, looks like a Jurgen Klopp Liverpool player right already. Is he the best midfielder, do you think? Is he Liverpool's best midfielder? He's right better, now, he's yeah. Better than the I've, right now. I've, I've, that's not the one I'd say, I'd say Curtis Jones. Right he's now, he's better than, than all of them right now. Right now, he looks and he looks like a senior player. That's what's mad mm. to me. He's taking the penalty responsibilities now. I'm hearing people take saying take Salah off penalties now and keep McAllister on penalties. Mm. I've got to go with uh, Gimmerish at some point because the the issue I've got in what I'm competing with here is yeah. Aston Villa. Uh, we're talking about a player, Bernardo, Man City. We're talking about, obviously, a Liverpool player. They're all having good seasons. But what Bruno's doing is keeping the whole thing together in a, a squad that's been absolutely crumbling around him. Yeah. So the stats aren't going to be the same as if he was playing with Joe Linton and Tenali because he's playing with Sean Longstaff, who isn't even a Premier League player this season. And a 17 year old kid next to him in Miley and one thing I will say is in terms of overall responsibility on a football pitch you know doing everything a centre midfielder should do and more I don't know if any other players in this list have as much to deal with because of the amount of injuries we've had mm. and if it wasn't for him we might actually be in a relegation battle mm. like the, the 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 ceiling of his talent yeah. while I accept that a lot of people have mentioned some great footballers and Bernardo Silva has particularly got a massive ceiling but he doesn't have the responsibility of everything on yeah, him yeah. the way Bruno does Bruno at times has been like a, a bloody Brazilian Roy Keane for us this, this season's been insane and that even sounds like it shouldn't even be said the the long balls he's played in behind defenders the way he has you know I sent this into the group chat the other day where he does that little flick right over the top in behind and if Almiron wasn't utter shit it's a goal and part of the Bruno Gimmerish stats are impacted by the fact that he is passing to absolutely useless fuckers like you know um, Almiron so um, in terms of someone just holding everything together I think he's as good as anyone in the Premier League on his day um, and if I wouldn't be surprised if he ends up at a Man City or a Real Madrid well, I, I, he's, he's, that a, level. he's on my list and I, and I think I, I actually think to be honest with you I think he's having a bit of a down season compared to last season I think you might be right that's because of the players he's around as well mm. he looks fucking stressed this season as well he's not, I, 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 feel, I feel like every two games he tries to punch someone like the, guy, the guy's half MMA half football this year like Jorginho's <laughs> still got a fucking elbow mark on his head but no I, I, Bruno's on my list I think that's why though I think he must be like fuck me if mm-hmm. if he'd had Tenali and Joe Linton with him all season or even one of them uh, we wouldn't be talking about him in a way of like oh he hasn't been quite as good I think he's been amazing I just think it's been a shocking season I think if this last season he slots straight in at three for me yeah like right yeah, maybe yeah. even maybe even Maybe even two. I'd have had was him with Rice. I'd have Rice, him Rice was at yeah. West Ham. I, I, he might, after the season Newcastle had last season, it probably would have been Rodby then him. I think this season though, I just think Newcastle, all of their troubles and everything that's been going on around them, you're right, he has been holding it together. But I feel like it still impacted his performance as well. He's definitely had more off games this season and that, that's it. That it, is it. It is hard though because we like, we're sort of, Titling this as the best, yeah, but we're not saying 
on the best form right now. So there's certain players like a Bruno G. I know people will laugh at it, but like Caicedo at times when I've seen him, like a lot of players that, even even a Kobe Mainu at Man United, that wouldn't potentially be able to get into this five because of the form that their team are on, because of the players they're playing with and the level of inconsistency that their team are showing. But actually, if you're going on the best, as in this man on his day, there's players that, like Caicedo, maybe like Kobe, Kobe Mainu, like other players that wouldn't get into this list that I think are hard but, done by here. But I think that's the difference though in my opinion. I think you using Kobe Mano is a great example because I feel like unlike the other two players you just mentioned, Kai Sado and, and Bruno Gamaris, they're in struggling teams but Kobe Mano is by far being the shining light yeah. in a struggling team whereas I don't feel like Kai Sado and Bruno are um, they're not playing bad, but they're not shining beyond everyone else's performances, in my opinion. Mm. I think those performances are almost weighing them down and it's bringing their quality down. Uh, because I mean, not, it's, Bobby Mayno is he, playing out of his skin. Yeah, like so Bruno, Bruno, uh? Bruno, Bruno Gimmerich is 1 million percent playing better than Mayno is right now. But you think Mayno, so? yeah. But it's be, look, I'm not taking anything away from Mayno because I know Man United fans love him for a good reason. Mm. But at his age, he's far su- uh, succeeding expectations. Yeah. Right? Okay, and I think um, he's definitely helped them return to some level of form. But if you want to, if you like, there's te- there's games this season where I'm like, we're fucked. We've got no striker. We've got nothing. Bruno Gimmer scored two goals out of nowhere, done mm. out of nothing. And if without him, fuck knows. So is he, has he been your best player this season? Uh, him or Anthony Gordon? Yeah. Mm. I would say I'd say Anthony Gordon. I'd say Gordon. Both them, but, but without. Bruno in the middle is Anthony Gordon even getting the ball? Yeah, exactly. yeah. Is he also yeah. technically playing out of position as well? Like, wouldn't he rather be one of the eights? As I'd much rather the same as an eight, but because we have uh, Sean Longstaff who is not defensively responsible, we have to put him as the six. You, you went nice on him. I thought you were just yeah, yeah. Every yeah. time you say long stuff, it's followed by some like I, swear word. I thought you were going to say he's not a footballer. <laughs> well, well, Jen, I mean, look, part of the issue is is Bruno Gimmerich has got this 17 year old next to him who's, who's good, but obviously 17. You're literally playing, you might as well be down to 10 men with long stuff. He's just so fucking useless. So that's why it, it is harder for, for Bruno. But look, I, I take your point. Like, I think what you, the comments you made about Louisa's stats, I'm like, fuck me, it's hard to argue with that. Well, you say, you say that though, but you know, if you look at key passes per game, uh, Bruno is only 0.1 less. He's doing 1.5. Bruno all time. <laughs> and then you look at big chances, he's only one less than Louise. Like for me, Louise is clear, clear third place in this. But I would put Bruno in number four just based on his, his stats. I'm, I'm going to say because alone. Bruno's in a more struggling team, I'm putting him third. This was putting that no, well, no one else agrees. Right. <laughs> so down four, we've all, we've all given four. Is there I, anyone else who missed? Who, no, sorry. Wait, wait, uh, who did wait, wait. we settle on third? Because there was, just a re- re- refresh, McAllister, there was Bernardo Silva, there was Louise, there was Bruno Gimmerich. Who, is, is there, the, who's majority, the majority went Louise. So I think Louise it has to third. be Louise because okay. the two yeah. of them went Louise. I would probably go Bruno G fourth. Me too. I had Louis, so I had I had McAllister at third and I had Louise at fourth. <sighs> I'm putting McAllister so we, fifth. This has gone off fourth now because we've, we've had okay. Louise at third. Okay. Fourth the majority. So who's, who's got who at four? Fourth Bruno G. Who have you got? I've got Bruno in fourth as well. I've got I've got Louise Douglas Louise. So I, I had Bruno in fourth, but then I'm. So I, I don't want Bernardo Silva falling out of this list because he's a better player than most of these players are talking about. Who Bernardo Silva? Well, Bernardo Silva. Yeah. I, do you know I think it five, is, right? I do you know I think it is with him. It's just he plays so many different roles. Yeah, yeah. he'll yeah. play wide. He'll play an advanced number ten role. He'll play. It's he difficult. I don't. I don't know. So argue, I don't know. You can argue that centre mid is his best position, I'm, and 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 definit- You can argue it, sorry, but you can't definitively say centre mid is that man's best position. He's a joker in the past. To compare, He's a wild part. It's difficult to compare Bernardo Silva's role to some of these other players. Like basically, all of the other players that we're describing mm. are all sixes. I, so it's, you know it's, it's just a massive difficult. compliment to Bernardo Silva. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, yeah. The most comparable so is probably Kobe Mayno to Bernardo Silva in mm. terms of how they play in that role. Yeah, yeah. except I, thanks, Kobe. No, I'm like, happy. Yeah. I'm happy to leave Bernardo Silva out as long as we can admit that I wasn't wrong. <laughs> no one's admitting that they <laughs> not making any promises. Everyone right. at this table <laughs> loves Bernardo. Silva. So, so we went Louis third. Bruno, Bruno fourth, fourth. And, that, then, and then and McAllister then fifth. fifth. McAllister. Ma- McAllister over, yeah, fifth. over Bernardo Silva. Is that what you're saying? I think you have to just purely yeah, oppositionally. Okay. Like it's difficult to compare them. Right? Some no- notable mentions in the fifth position before we just hand it mine, to McAllister. Mine, 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 mine. I had Kobe. So this is all right. So this is controversial. Look at this, Brian. So when I wrote it down originally, it was it was Rodri, Rice, McAllister, Douglas, Louise, and then I had Bruno. Right. And then you brought up Kobe Mayno, and then I was like, oh, "Can I take Bruno out for Kobe Mayno?" And obviously, you just made the thing. <laughs> See, this is what I'm saying. You're not going to like it, <laughs> but because look, in life, Bruno is a better player than Kobe Mayno. We know that. Like last mm. season, proved it. Bruno is, like you said, is going to 
potentially go on to another club, unfortunately, maybe, and be a top, top, top player. Like, I rate Bruno. But I'm just looking at the 23-24 season. And even if Bruno, like you said, you've watched way more 90 minutes of Newcastle than me. I just feel like maybe it is Kobe Mano's first season blinding my eyes, giving me rose tinted lenses. The fact that there's nothing to compare it for from him before and Bruno, we could compare last season and see the sort of drop off. I think maybe that's why I've given it to Kobe Mano. But I know Bruno is a better midfielder. I mean, Mano's potential is massive. It's massive. He's been quality. His output, his actual output though is far uh, worse than what Bruno's doing. Is and obviously, it? he's played less games. He's a young player. Like it's this, Ten Hag, bro. This was, no, no, but it's this Ten Hag. If this was a, if this was a best player under twenty two, then obviously you go for for Kobe. But mm. he's not in the top five. Like you can, all, we can all admit Kobe's had a good season. But Absolutely. we can, but we, but to be in the top five, you have to have an amazing. Um, and we say I don't think good you don't think he's he had an amazing season. I, I don't think he's had a better By season than what than what Bruno Guimaraes does for. He's only yeah. he's only been in for half the season. Yeah. Well, yeah. Let's remember that. Yeah. Listen, when we were saying, and especially the argument you were making about in struggling sides, he is the shining light. For that exact argument, that's why I have got Barkley in my top five. Because I just think Barkley, I think Barkley, I've watched Luton a lot of times this season now, He's right? Quality. I've, I've probably never watched a team that far down the table as often as I've watched Luton this season. They're good they're, to they're work. He is they're so good like he's yeah. so good like we were saying I mean the way he glided past Marcus Rashford no, Jake, no, <laughs> no but like he is actually so good like we were saying about Rodri not getting the yeah. ball taken off him Barkley don't get the ball taken off him like he uh, and again there's always the surprise element that will play him right so say for example my argument for Declan Rice over Rodri was the fact that I knew that Rodri could do it at that level I didn't doubt Declan Rice but there wasn't the certainty right and this is my argument for Ross Barkley is like sure. I thought he was washed mate I thought he was absolutely done and when I see Luton signing Townsend and Barkley I thought mate they're names but they're not going to do anything VR hmm. Barkley's been amazing yeah but there's an argument say he is washed because of that <laughs> because he's at Luton he went to Chelsea and he couldn't cut it at Chelsea that right. was the level where he was supposed to step up and some players it's easy for them to step into an environment where there's not as much pressure Craig, I'm so where, break you I'm dog, where you can be the big dog where you can be the big dog Ross Barkley in the summer moves to Man United yeah. he gets in the team over Kobe that's not happening. Off based mate, off one performance for Luton, mate. I, I could, he's I could, just a big dog in a small pond. I'm in a pond. crystal ball right now. I'm looking into it. And I'm going. Ross Barkley is the one that they're going to go for. Bearing in mind the the Nice yeah. connection. Bearing in mind they're going to be recruiting a lot of English. Conor Gallagher. Uh, management. Bearing in mind not nah, not, happening. Even though you lot need. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bear in mind, Jerry told me this is <laughs> happening, and he's going to come in and he's going to displace Kobe. I honestly believe it's just that big brother syndrome that he has. Of he's at Luton. It's easy for him to be the big dog there. He's looking at all the other players like, I've done it, I've been here, worn the t-shirt, you guys haven't. I can perform like this and and be that guy here. But when it comes, if he goes Man United, you'll see once again, he will drop off and it's not, I just don't rate him like that. He's good and he's technically good and he's been amazing this season. I've watched him. But I just feel like it's because he's at Luton. That's just my if, opinion. If, if, so if we, because I'm, I'm not sure, is Bruno fourth here or not? Bruno's yeah. fourth. Yeah, 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 for me, yeah. So fifth place, there's been a good compelling argument for Ross Barkley there. Kobe Maynard's mentioned McAllister, it has to be Bernardo me. Silva. Who, who are we going with? I, like, come on, it's one of the Liverpool midfield. They're, they're potentially going to win the league. Yeah, they're, that's they're, what I'm saying. Title challenging. It has he's, to be. He's I, got to be there. I think it's fair that you go McAllister. Yeah, of okay. course. Hmm. Adam at third. If you didn't even put him in, that would have been a shocker for me. Uh, what the uh, hell? McAllister fifth. Are you all right with that? He's not all right at all. Why? Why? <laughs> Why? 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 Come on then. You don't want to put the World Cup winner in at fifth, all right? <laughs> are we doing best midfielders in the World Cup? Are we? Are I'm <laughs> just saying. And he's in a team that's potentially right, going to win the league. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know, go, yeah, well, yeah, McAllister. I, I, I. <laughs> you, you hate it. Like, why do you hate I, I, it? I like the Barkley argument. I like yeah. the Barkley argument, man. Yeah, I, I, and I was, listen, I think Barkley could play for Liverpool. Oh, I think does. Barkley's been sick. We're going to put hypotheticals over what someone's field. actually been doing this season with Liverpool. Well, in, 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 that's in, what we're doing. In, in, I'll use Joey's argument from earlier. If Alex McAllister was at Luton, would, would he have had the impact that Ross Barkley's had? Well, he's been doing it at Brighton. 
I don't think you had the same impact that Barkley's had this season. What impact has he had? They're 17. What, <laughs> what are we talking about right, right now? Lewis, Lewis when Lewis 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 was at Bright, nah, they were nah. finishing top eight. Like, like, what are we talking Luton, about? Luton should have been absolutely bottom of the table. They spend like a 20th of they what they've done. They should, they should, they have, should, have, should have been gone five games Can we stop? 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 Can we give the managers some credit, right? Because they actually are hard to go. It's hard to go. I give him credit for bringing Barkley in. You think it's all Barkley? You lot are going on like it's all Ross Barkley here. I don't got, understand the where this is from. Because Man United last time I checked, something like that. They're it's, just they're just a handful. Yeah. Luton are a handful in general. I watch Big all you. of their players and they're a handful. They're just that's just how I'll, they're playing I'll, right I'll, now. I'll co-sign McAllister. I'll co-sign McAllister. I can't believe you're reluctant. We're really grateful for that. We'll put McAllister in fifth, the lads. <laughs> <laughs> and then honourable honourable mentions, oh, Kobe. Mentions. Yeah, there's yeah, a, there's yeah, a few others, man. There's a few others. Who? Is that Ah, he's been Fine. injured a lot. Fine, he's just sick probably player, twelve. Eze's he's unreal. He's been Eze's injured a lot. Fucking ridiculous, mate. Eze. He hasn't been played enough. Uh, I, well, you, okay, there's a few that haven't played that much. That you could, you, I think you could say Lucas Pakita if he played a little bit more. James Ward Prowse. Yeah. James Ward Prowse. He's, 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 he's a midfielder. Isn't he? yeah. He's been playing well for West Ham. Midfielder. And then obviously, on that one. and then obviously, <laughs> Joey Enzo and Caicedo, best two in the league. Really, yes. you know. Genuinely, if we'd said this at the start of the season that them two won't even be in, the, we won't even mention them in like a serious way when they're the two most expensive centre midfielders in the league mm-hmm. fuck me yeah well you got welcome to, to Chelsea you got Football Club 